Nestled in the shadow of the Sajama volcano in Bolivia, a vast series of intricate lines span the landscape, crisscrossing and converging in patterns that have puzzled researchers for years. The Sajama lines, often overshadowed by the famed Nazca lines of Peru, cover an astonishing 22,000 square kilometers, dwarfing their Nazca counterparts both in size and age. These geoglyphs are not simple straight lines, but complex designs, pathways and geometric patterns, suggesting an organized and purposeful effort. What's even more striking is the sheer precision and dedication that went into crafting these lines. They were meticulously created by scraping away the dark oxidized rock surface to reveal the lighter soil beneath. But the big question remains, why were they made? While some theories suggest they were ancient pathways or part of religious ceremonies, their true purpose remains shrouded in mystery. The local Aymara people have lived in the region for generations and have their interpretations of the lines, which include ancestral symbols and pathways to sacred sites. Yet without definitive historical records or similar ancient references, the true nature and intent behind the vast geoglyphs of the Sajama lines remain one of the great enigmas of South American archaeology. The Etruscans, a vibrant and influential civilization, once thrived in the region that's now modern-day Tuscany and parts of Umbria in Italy. They were artists, engineers and merchants, leaving behind exquisite artifacts and grand burial tombs, indicative of a society rich in culture and sophistication. But among the remnants of this once thriving civilization lies a lingering mystery, their unique language. While many inscriptions and texts in the Etruscan language have been discovered, our understanding remains superficial. The Etruscans adopted a variant of the Greek alphabet, allowing us to pronounce the words, but comprehending the true meaning is another matter altogether. Despite numerous attempts at decipherment, large portions of the language stay elusive, We've discerned names, some religious words and elements of grammar, but comprehensive texts remain frustratingly just out of grasp. The mystery is deepened by the Etruscans' historical significance. They played crucial roles in the development of Roman civilization, influencing its art, culture and even religion. The fact that we cannot fully understand their language creates a significant gap in our comprehension of ancient Mediterranean history. Without a Rosetta Stone-type artifact or a more considerable bilingual text, the secrets of the Etruscan language might remain locked away. A testament to an ancient civilization that still whispers its enigmas to the modern world. Nestled deep within the Bayan Kara Ula Mountains on the border between China and Tibet, a discovery in 1938 captivated the world. An expedition led by Dr. Chi Pute uncovered a series of cave tombs, and within them a collection of stone discs reminiscent of modern-day phonograph records. These became known as the Dropa Stones. Measuring about 12 inches in diameter, each stone had a continuous spiral groove, originating from the center and spiraling outwards. When analyzed, these grooves were found to be tiny hieroglyphs, inscriptions of an unknown origin. The story deepened when the narrative of the hieroglyphs was purportedly deciphered years later, suggesting a tale of a spacecraft that crashed in the region 12,000 years ago. The inhabitants of that ship, called the Dropper, found themselves stranded on Earth, unable to return to their home planet. The implications were sensational, hinting at ancient extraterrestrial contact. However, concrete evidence remains elusive. While some believe the dropper stones are genuine artifacts showcasing an ancient alien encounter, others argue they might be a hoax or a misinterpretation of natural geology. The stones themselves have become elusive, with many supposedly held in private collections, away from public view or further study. Their origin, meaning and significance remain enigmatic, providing tantalizing hints but no concrete answers. The Rosetta Stone, discovered in 1799, is often hailed as one of archaeology's most significant finds. Before its discovery, the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic script was an indecipherable code, lost to time. But the Rosetta Stone provided the critical key to unlocking it, bridging a link between the modern world and ancient Egypt. This slab of granodiorite, found near the town of Rashid in the Nile Delta, bore a decree issued in 196 BCE written in three scripts, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, Demotic script and ancient Greek. 
The beauty of the stone was the content. Each script essentially said the same thing. Scholars, particularly Jean-Francois Champollion, realized they could use the known Greek text as a reference to decode the mysterious hieroglyphs. The process was challenging, requiring intense study, cross-referencing, and the piecing together of linguistic patterns. But by 1822, Champollion announced his decipherment of the first few lines of the hieroglyphs, and with continued work, the ancient Egyptian language opened up like a book. For the first time in over a millennium, we could read the words of the pharaohs, the stories of priests, and the tales of everyday citizens, breathing life into a civilization that had long passed. The Rosetta Stone, now housed in the British Museum, stands as a testament to human perseverance and the enduring desire to connect with our past. In a world of ancient stories and mysteries, perhaps none has captured the imagination as fervently as the tale of the lost city of Atlantis. Originating from the writings of the ancient philosopher Plato in his dialogues, Timaeus and Critias, Atlantis was described as a powerful and advanced kingdom that existed about 9,000 years before his time. According to Plato, Atlantis was a naval power lying in front of the Pillars of Hercules and in a single day and night of misfortune sank into the ocean, disappearing forever. The story has been a subject of intrigue, debate and a myriad of interpretations. Was Plato's description purely allegorical, meant to deliver a philosophical message? Or was he documenting a genuine historical truth, a tale passed down through the ages? Over the centuries, various explorers, historians and enthusiasts have proposed different locations for Atlantis, ranging from the Mediterranean Sea to the Caribbean and even as far as Antarctica. Yet despite countless theories, no definitive evidence has been found to pinpoint the existence or exact location of this lost city. In the early 20th century, divers off the coast of the Greek island Antikythera stumbled upon a shipwreck that harbored an object unlike any other from the ancient world, the Antikythera mechanism. This intricate assembly of bronze gears and dials encased in a wooden box dates back to the second century BCE and has baffled researchers with its sophistication. Detailed studies, particularly in the last few decades, have shown that this device is an ancient analog computer. The mechanism was designed to predict astronomical positions and eclipses for astrological and calendrical purposes, showcasing an astonishing understanding of celestial mechanics. Some believe it was also used to track the four-year cycle of athletic games in ancient Greece. The Antikythera mechanism remains a testament to the advanced scientific knowledge and engineering prowess of the ancient Greeks. Its existence raises an intriguing question. What other technological marvels from antiquity might still be waiting to be discovered? And how did such a technologically advanced device come into being during an age when such complexity was thought to be impossible? Nestled within the vast expanse of the Indus Valley, one finds the remnants of Mohenjo-daro, an ancient urban center that thrived around 2500 BCE. This city, whose name translates to the Mound of the Dead Men in Sindhi, stands as a testament to a sophisticated civilization that remains largely enigmatic. The city's layout reveals an astute understanding of urban planning, with well-ordered streets and distinct residential and administrative sectors. What truly astonishes historians and archaeologists alike is the city's advanced infrastructure. Mohenjo-daro boasted a complex water management system, including wells and a network of covered drains, showcasing an understanding of sanitation and hydro-engineering that was unparalleled for its time. One of the city's most iconic structures is the Great Bath, a large pool that was possibly used for ritualistic or communal purposes. Despite its architectural wonders, many aspects of Mohenjo-daro remain shrouded in mystery. Why did this advanced civilization decline? What purpose did the various seals and artifacts found throughout the city serve? And most intriguingly, what language did its inhabitants speak? And what wisdom is locked behind their undeciphered script? Journey to the arid plains of southern Peru, and you'll be greeted by an enigmatic spectacle, the Nazca Lines. These enormous geoglyphs, spanning several miles, were etched into the ground by the ancient Nazca people between 500 BCE and 500 CE. The designs are varied, ranging from simple geometric patterns to intricate depictions of animals like hummingbirds, spiders, and monkeys. 
Their sheer scale and precision are baffling, especially considering that their creators would not have been able to view them from above. This has led to a plethora of theories about their purpose. Some historians believe the Nazca lines had astronomical significance, aligning with celestial bodies or marking solstices. Others speculate they were part of elaborate rituals to appeal to deities for water and fertility in an unforgiving desert landscape. One of the most intriguing aspects of these geoglyphs is how they have persisted for millennia. The region's dry climate and infrequent rain have played a part, but so too has the Nazca people's ingenuity. They created the lines by removing the reddish-brown iron oxide-coated pebbles to reveal the light-colored earth beneath, and the depth of the lines protects them from winds. A combination of nature and human foresight has preserved these ancient messages, waiting for us to fully unravel their mysteries. And as always, I hope you enjoyed our video. Thanks for watching.